Hi friends, it's Katya. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. We're going to be playing a little bit of a game. I've been seeing people on Instagram playing first and favorite where you take an author that has a backlist or just more than one book and you talk about what your first book that you read from that author was, the book that made you want to read more from that author, and then your favorite book by that author in contrast. So I posted this on my Instagram story for people to give me some authors that had written more than one book that I could talk about and I already posted a few of the answers on there but I just thought it would be fun to continue to talk about them and bring you guys into it as well. So I hope you guys also enjoy and will let me know also your answers to some of these authors, what your first book you read by them and what your favorite book you read by them was. I'm going to start off with one of my favorite authors ever 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 and that is Frederick Bachman. Frederick Bachman is a Swedish author. The first book that I read from him was A Man Called Uva. I actually listened to the audiobook which is narrated by J.K. Simmons and it is so so good so if you're into audiobooks that's definitely an audiobook that I would recommend. This book follows our main character, Uva. Um, he's an old man. I want to say he's like 60s or 70s, although I don't really remember. And at the beginning of the book, he's really going through kind of a difficult time in his life. He's recently lost his job and his wife has also recently passed away. I'm going to let you know there's like a huge trigger warning for suicide. Throughout the beginning of the book, I think like the first third of the book at least, Uva is making multiple suicide attempts. But also at the beginning of the book, he meets this new family who lives next Door. They end up kind of trying to get Uva reacquainted with the community and the whole rest of the book is about him opening himself up to the possibility of happiness again, opening himself up to other people and not just kind of like hiding away and being sad and clinging to the past. It is so heartwarming and really lovely and that book really made me know that I wanted to read more Frederick Bachman books. I read it on a recommendation because I don't think that just like the cover and the description would have appealed to me otherwise but I'm so so glad that I read it because like I said it introduced me to now one of my favorite authors. Now picking a favorite Frederick Bachman book is much much more difficult. It's got to be either Anxious People or Beartown. Now the difference between the two of these is I've read Anxious People twice and I've only read Beartown once but I remember the characters so so vividly in Beartown and that might also be because that's a trilogy so I've spent more time um, with the characters and in that setting but then with Anxious People I I also really really love that book but even now I couldn't tell you any of the characters names. The thing that stuck with me more were the story and the reveals and kind of the themes surrounding what happened and then like I said with Beartown I remember the characters really well but I couldn't tell you the story of what happened quite as easily. So it's kind of an interesting difference, but again, I would recommend both books. Anxious People is about a bank robbery turned wrong. So there's a, a bank robber who is fleeing the scene and ends up trying to hide out in this apartment that they think is empty, but actually it's being shown at like an open house. And so the bank robber decides to hold everyone in the apartment hostage. And so then it becomes kind of a study of all of the characters within the apartment and the ways that they interact and reveals about their past and also just some really goofy funny things that happen as well. Bear Town, on the other hand is a little bit more somber. We followed this town that is really focused and reliant on their youth hockey team. Like everything about the town really revolves around the success of their youth hockey team and one of the star players sexually assaults a girl from the town and so you follow those characters but you also follow like the coaches and the team managers and other people from the school and other people just generally who live in the town and everybody in the town has an opinion about it about whether he should still be able to play about what repercussions he should face for whether or not he did it so it's it's really dramatic and dark and affecting and sometimes difficult to read but it's really beautifully written i love frederick bachman's writing style and like i said before the characters just really really stick with you and the themes and the fallout from the first book i think really continue and build on each other well in the second and third books in the trilogy and so yeah my two favorite frederick bachman books are anxious people and bear town so those are always two books that are kind of like my go-to recommendations for people again because I just think Frederick Bachman is like so 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 talented. I'm realizing now that I keep saying Bachman, I don't know if it's Bachman or Backman. Let me know down below <laughs> if you know and I'm so sorry if I've been mispronouncing it this whole time. Next is an author that I'm so so glad somebody brought up. I think Mariana sent this one in but it's Sarah Dessen. 
Oh my god. I love this reminder that I need to reread Sarah Dessen. That woman ruled my tween years. I think I must have been like 10 when I read The Truth About Forever, which was my first Sarah Dessen. And then I read everything in her backlist. And then I looked forward to her releases every year until I think the most recent book she published was in 2019. I think I've read every single Sarah Dessen. I don't think I've missed one. For a long time, Sarah Dessen's formula, and this varies a little bit from book to book, but for most of them, it takes place during the summer. We have a girl with some kind of trauma in her past that she's trying to overcome. She meets a new group of friends or is put into a new situation. She ends up meeting a boy who also has some level of trauma and difficulty in his past. She grows as a person and in her relationships and then usually by the end of the book there is a kiss and she ends up with her love interest and I ate these books up. I loved them so much. Sarah Dustin was like a huge, huge staple in my life for a long time, but the book that spurred that love was The Truth About Forever. This book follows Macy. At the beginning of the book, she's recently lost her father. I think he had a heart attack while he was on a run, and Macy is heartbroken about this because she was really, really close to her father, but in this book, she ends up taking a job with a catering company over the summer and becoming really good friends with the other people who work for this company and also becoming friends with this boy named Wes. I oh my god 10 year old me had such a crush on Wes and I loved that in this book Macy and Wes played this game I don't even really know if you can count it as a game I don't remember if they called it like truth it was like truth or dare except there weren't any dares they were literally just asking each other questions and sometimes invasive questions and so that's why I say it's not really like a game it was just more of a a Q and A, but I was so, so invested in Macy and her story. And that's why The Truth About Forever is definitely always going to be one of my favorite Sarah Dessen books. Again, it's been years since I revisited it. So it would be so interesting to reread. And then also Lock and Key. That book followed our main character, Ruby. Ruby had kind of a rough relationship with her mother. So she moves in with her sister, Cora, and her next door neighbor is popular, handsome, charming, Nate. And so Ruby is both kind of trying to reconcile her relationship with her sister who she's been really kind of rocky with ever since Cora left home and then also Ruby is getting to know her next door neighbors and getting to know Nate a little bit better and some of his like difficulties in his life that he's kind of hiding as well. This book was so emotional. I think I cried when I read this and I also think I cried when I read Just Listen which is my third and I promise the last Sarah Dustin book that I'm going to mention as a favorite. This book follows our main character Annabelle. She has two sisters. I believe one of the sisters is dealing with an eating disorder. Annabelle is dealing with um, the fact that she was sexually assaulted, I believe a few months before the book takes place. And a lot of the book just focuses on her dynamic with her family. And then also on, this is such a reoccurring theme, also on the boy that she meets at school. Um, they connect over music. It's very sweet. I don't remember a lot of details about this book, but I just remember it really affecting me emotionally. So yeah, I'm like very interested maybe in the future in doing a Sarah Dessen vlog. We'll have to see. If Sarah Dessen was the contemporary rom-com queen of my tween years, the contemporary rom-com queen of my adult years, is Emily Henry. My first Emily Henry book that I ever read was Beach Read. I feel like that is a really common place for people to start with her. I listened to the audiobook in 2020, I believe, the year that it came out. I thought it was okay the first time I read it. I think I gave it three and a half or four stars. I was going to originally give it three, but the ending made me cry and so I bumped it up. But since then I have reread it and revisited it and enjoyed it more with subsequent reads. This book, as I'm sure you know, follows Gus and January, who are two writers who end up falling for each other while they're both living in a small town in Michigan. Gus writes really dark, sad, literary kinds of novels, and January writes uplifting, happy, romantic kind of fiction, and the two of them are both in ruts for different reasons, and so they decide to switch genres and write within the other person's genre, and in the process end up falling in love. I love the way that Emily Henry writes characters, especially in this book. I felt really connected to January, but not as much as I felt connected to her next book, which is my favorite book that she's ever written. Now, she does have a book coming out this month in April called Funny Story about two characters who end up dating because their exes date each other, and so then they end up coming into one another's lives because of that and starting what seems like a little bit of a complicated fake dating scheme, which I love. Uh, that's one of my favorite tropes. So there is the possibility that my favorite Emily Henry could be dethroned and replaced by Funny Story, but I do doubt it a little bit just because of how much I love 
people we meet on vacation. I don't even know. I feel like I talk about this book all the time and, and the people who are going to be interested in it have probably already read it, but it just means so much to me. This is a friends to lovers story about two characters who go on vacation together and we follow them across years of different vacations where they slowly realize that they are in love. This is a book that makes me really, really emotional to read, even in moments that are not supposed to be emotional because I just adore the characters so much and want them so badly to get together that even if they're having like a silly bantery moment, I get teary eyed because I say, oh my gosh, they're, they're like perfect together. Why can't they just accept that they're in love? Like that's the level of, of invested that I was in these characters. I also just really resonated with both of them separately as characters for different reasons. I felt really connected to different parts of their personalities and felt really like seen. And that's one of the things that like on a larger scale, I love about reading generally is that any feeling I ever Ever have I'm not alone like there's there's always a book somewhere that has articulated something that I felt in the past I mean escapism is great don't get me wrong but there's something particularly like potent and poignant about about seeing something expressed that you felt before but you didn't necessarily have the words to explain that's one of my favorite things about reading and I felt that so many times while reading people we meet on vacation so no other Emily Henry book has quite lived up to Alex and Poppy for me yet but I'm still really excited to read Funny Story. Next, let's switch genres a little bit. Um, Caroline submitted Lee Bardugo. Now, Lee Bardugo wrote the Shadow and Bone trilogy, the Six of Crows duology, the King of Scars. I think it's gonna be a duology. Actually, I think that I heard that she's writing another Six of Crows book, so that's not gonna be a duology anymore. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about that. The only Lee Bardugo series that I'm really not familiar with at all is her Ninth House and Hellbent series, the Alex Stern stuff. Just because I know that I can be a little bit of a fraidy cat and I saw some of the some of the content warnings for the the more gory things that happen in those books and I felt it was best to just avoid them for my own personal well-being but one of these days I think my curiosity might win out and I might have to read Ninth House I'll just have to read it during like sunny daylight hours so that I don't scare myself but the first Lee Bardugo book that I read was Six of Crows I I told myself that I didn't have to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy and that I could just dive into Six of Crows because I wasn't really interested in the premise of Shadow and Bone but I was very interested in the Six of Crows duology now for those of you that don't know Six of Crows is a, a fantasy that's set in kind of an Amsterdam-like setting and it is a heist novel. So you follow six different characters and all of their different roles within this heist that they have to pull off. I loved the world, I loved the characters and the kind of found family dynamic that ended up developing among these six different characters and also the romantic relationships. So, so much fun. That's why the first Six of Crows book I think is my favorite. Even though we get to know the characters better in the second Crooked Kingdom book, I think Six of Crows will always kind of set the bar for me in terms of, of heist novels and in terms of found family dynamics and just Lee Bardugo books in general. That was the first and my favorite as well. The Shadow and Bone trilogy is definitely my least favorite out of all of those. I liked that in King of Scars and Rule of Wolves, we got to see some characters interact who I didn't necessarily think would end up coming together. Like I thought that was really exciting. But again, I don't think anything hits quite like that original duology and quite like the first Six of Crows book in particular. Next is Sarah Adams. This one's a little bit fun um, and it's a little bit of a preview because I'm gonna be talking about these books in my next wrap up. I've only read two Sarah Adams books. I read Practice Makes Perfect and When in Rome and I read them out of order. When in Rome is the first book and I read that second but Practice Makes Perfect was both my first and my favorite. These books both take place in the small town of Rome, Kentucky. They have a really sweet cast of characters of like the townies who live there. When in Rome follows Amelia who is a famous pop star who goes to this small town to kind of hide out for a little while. She feels like she needs a break from the spotlight and so she she doesn't tell her manager where she is. She just kind of wants to go off the grid, but while she's there, she falls in love with a pie shop owner. And then in the following book, the pie shop owner's brother, Annie, the flower shop owner, falls in love with Amelia's bodyguard, Will. These books were almost sickeningly sweet, but in a good way. I really, really enjoyed them. They're closed door romances as well, if that's something that you're looking for. But I feel like the way that Sarah Adams builds tension and chemistry between the characters is so great and so spoon-worthy, even if there isn't actually any on-page 
spicy scenes like there was a scene i think it was in practice makes perfect where the characters just brushed hands and i was like giggling squealing because because sarah adams had built this really great chemistry between the characters i'm excited to read more sarah adams in the future because at least these two books were so easy to fly through and so addictive to read practice makes perfect in particular i oh this is so embarrassing i stayed up until 4 a.m to read it i tried reading a few chapters and i said oh i'm not really into this i might return it to the library i might dnf but then i decided to to give it another chance before i went to bed I, I said i'll just read a few more chapters and see if it clicks with me and if i don't like it i'll return it tomorrow i ended up not being able to put it down and i finished the book at 4 a.m that morning which was not good for my sleep schedule let me tell you that and then similarly ashley poston i read the book that has become really really popular from her recently which is the seven year slip this book follows our main character clementine who inherits an apartment from her aunt and this apartment ends up being a magical time traveling apartment where she meets this man who exists seven years ago and ends up falling in love with him but obviously their timing is a little bit off because they exist on different timelines which makes things a little bit complicated however my favorite Ashley Poston book is The Dead Romantic this book follows a ghost writer who can also see ghosts and she has to go back to her hometown to assist with a funeral her family owns of a funeral home and so she really grew up around a lot of death and just a lot of ghosts generally because she had the ability to see them and i think the reason that i preferred the dead romantics to the seven year slip was because of the setting and the themes the seven year slip also talks about grief but i found it to be a little bit more effective for me personally in the dead romantics and i also just loved the the kind of boldness of setting a rom-com around a funeral home and around kind of this supernatural stuff i just thought it was really fascinating and i liked the way that they talked about death one of my best friends from high school ended up becoming a mortician and the way that they talked about death in this book i guess because it's all like surrounding a funeral home is similar to how she's talked about it in the past and so i don't know i just i really liked it for that reason and so that's why the dead romantics is my favorite ashley poston but i didn't realize um that she actually has a pretty extensive backlist and it's only recently that she's been writing these like supernatural modern day rom-coms but she wrote like geekerella was so so popular on booktube a few years ago and i never got around to reading it but i didn't realize that it was the same author next is alice oseman the first alice oseman book that i read was radio silence and i read this because of cat from paperback dreams i don't know if you guys used to watch her videos but i really loved her videos and she used to gush about this book and so that's the reason that i read this book originally i think i ended up giving it three stars i didn't quite connect to it as much as i was hoping to i think maybe also because by the time i read it i was already in undergrad and had kind of like moved past a lot of the themes of this book in particular this book follows a girl who's in her last year of school i guess like the equivalent of high school i don't know what the highest grade level is like in the uk or like the way that grades work if it took place in america it would be like her senior year of high school moving into college i will admit i don't remember like what the, the wording is for grade levels in in the uk and i do apologize for that i liked this book i liked the characters it didn't necessarily like lead me to want to read more alice oseman the reason that i ended up reading more alice oseman is because of the heartstopper series i read them actually as a webcomic originally i think in like 2019 somebody had posted the link to the tapas.io website and so i read like whatever was out at the time i don't remember what the volume equivalents would have been but like volume one and two maybe and that like quickly became my my favorite alice oseman that i've read i think out of the five heartstopper volumes that i've read now my favorite is either the first or the second. I think the later three are also great, but there's something just really magical about the romance of, of them falling for each other for the first time and kind of navigating that. And it's been really fun also to watch it come to life in the TV series as well. Sally Rooney. I adore Sally Rooney. Unfortunately, this is going to be a little bit boring because my favorite Sally Rooney book is also my first Sally Rooney book, and that's Normal People. Normal People follows Connell and Marianne, who are two students, and when they're younger in their hometown, Connell is is popular and charming and well-loved and comes from kind of a poor family whereas Marianne comes from a very wealthy family but she is really kind of an outcast within their school and they end up kind of dating or more just hooking up secretly and developing a friendship that Connell wants to keep secret from the rest of his friends and then when they go to university Marianne becomes kind of the more popular charming smart one and Connell really takes a back seat and the two of them dance around each other for years and they have good points in their relationship and bad 
bad points in their relationship and they just like do not communicate well and it's really frustrating but it's also so real as much as i wanted to shake some sense into these characters for for not really explaining exactly how they feel i thought a lot of the decisions that they made were understandable given their pasts and their situations. It's the kind of book that really like rips your heart out but it's also so slow and hypnotizing. I read it within a day but I, it felt like I was in a trance when I read it. I know people really love the tv show and I think the tv show is a really good adaptation but I personally prefer the book in this particular circumstance. Sally Rooney doesn't use quotes um, within their conversations and so a lot of times it's difficult to tell which character is saying what and if they're thinking or if they're speaking but I think part of that confusion just adds to the the mood and the tone of the book and I just I really loved it it's one of my favorite books ever and it was the first Sally Rooney I read I was a little bit disappointed with conversations with friends and beautiful world where are you just in comparison but she's an author that I will definitely always read when she has a new release the first Taylor Jenkins read book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I think that's probably a, a starting point for a lot of different people with the Taylor Jenkins read. Follow Evelyn Hugo, who's kind of a Liz Taylor type. She had a very illustrious old Hollywood film career and she married seven different men. The book focuses not only on that, but also on what Evelyn deems to be more important love stories in her life. I don't wanna spoil it, even though I'm so sure that like everybody's already read it, but I did really, really enjoy it the first time that I read it. However, not as much as I enjoyed Daisy Jones and the Six. Daisy Jones and the Six follows a fictional band and it's all written in it, this interview format which I thought was so unique and so propulsive for the story. I liked that that interview format left a lot of uncertainty about how things actually happened because different people's recounting and perspectives of different events could be so drastically different and that's just because of people's different interpretations and different memories and I thought that that was kind of a weakness of the show is that it kind of presented everything in a more straightforward way and I, I thought one of the strengths of the book was that everything was a little bit murky which I think is more true to real life. I don't know if she's necessarily like an auto buy author but I still really enjoy her books and the complicatedness of her characters. Also V.E. Schwab, a fantasy author, I read her Vicious duology and her Darker Shade of Magic trilogy but my favorite V.E. Schwab is Vicious. This book follows two college roommates who are very ambitious and ambitiously try to experiment to give themselves superpowers. Both very morally gray and villainous, although one is seen as more villainous than the other. Vicious has remained my favorite. I've gone back and I've reread it a few times and I just think it's like really thought-provoking in the themes that it raises. I love the characters and so Vicious is my, my number one. And let's close out by talking about Jane Austen. I have read every Jane Austen except for Mansfield Park and then Sanditon, which is only partially finished because it was the book that she was working on when she passed away but my first Jane Austen I ever read was Pride and Prejudice, a classic. I had watched I think most of the movies before reading the books as well but I love Pride and Prejudice. That might be my favorite as well, the original enemies to lovers story or maybe just like dislike and misunderstanding to lovers. So my first was Pride and Prejudice. It might also be my favorite but if we're talking about very very close second or maybe tied for first that's definitely Emma. Emma follows a very rich, well-meaning but very flawed main character in Emma Woodhouse. Her dynamics and relationships with the different characters I thought were so much fun to read and the way that she evolves throughout the story. All right thank you so so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you. Please let me know down below your firsts and favorites for any of the authors in this list or if you can think of popular authors that you want to share your first and favorites for I would love to read about them. I hope you are having the most lovely day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell to be notified of the next time I post if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video.